Hi, I'm John Graviscus. It's great to have you working around the boat with us again. Today on Shipshape TV, what we're going to be getting into is we're going to show you how to cut off the food source to these wood boring worms. And you've got to remember, anywhere in salt water or brackish water, anywhere on the globe, there are about 18 different species of wood boring worms that all do two things really well. They eat wood like crazy and they multiply. Well, today on Shipshape TV, we're also going to show you how to strengthen an original piling so that it's stronger than new. And then we're going to be getting into some tips on how to redeck the top side of your docks. But before we can get into it, shoot, you know the drill by now. You see, we need to work out a little trade-off. We've got to get all of you to spend the next 30 minutes with us right here on the water's edge. And then in exchange, with again, a little help from a few of my very knowledgeable friends in the marine and construction industries, we're all going to pool together. And we're going to try and do our very best to let you in on a few more ways to make your boat and boating accessories ship shape. Well, thanks, Buck. First thing I'd like to get into today is I would like to introduce our first guest, who happens to be an expert in dock and dock piling restorations, which is based right here in Jupiter, Florida. Todd, I just want to thank you and your crew for showing up and spending some time with us. Thanks for having us out, John. I've already pointed out some crustacean growth on the outside of these pilings, but as I'm kind of examining them a little bit closer, like right here, I see we may have some worm damage. What's right. the likelihood of that? Well, John, before we jump to any conclusions, why don't we go ahead and grab some safety goggles, crank up the pressure cleaner, because these barnacles are really going to fly. I was curious as to just how much water pressure was coming out from the tip of Todd's wand. What you're witnessing is about 4,000 pounds per square inch of knifing force, which will just blast away any growth that may have attached itself to any of the structural supports found in the water. What Todd wants to do is clean the outside surface of each piling from the high tide water line all the way down to where the timber meets up with the sand bottom. This entire span is the habitat zone for these barnacles and oysters to hang out on. Now notice the height of the tide here. We tried to coordinate this portion of the dock restoration with one of the two low tides we receive daily down here on the east coast of southern Florida which is going to give us much better access visually to the piling to see exactly what's going on underneath any growth. We have a total of six pilings that have been driven into shallower waters on the riverbed. But we also have an additional four pilings that have been strategically placed into deeper water. This is so a boat will have plenty of room to accommodate draft when it's tied up to the dock. So by using divers masks, it's underwater for these guys. And again, because of all the pressure generated from the tip of the pressure washer, any crustaceans found will be removed within a matter of just a few minutes. Todd, we're very fortunate here. Check this out. This is an actual piece of the piling that I've blown off as we were pressure cleaning. And, oh, there's one of the ones right oh, oh, still in the water. I got him. All right, cool. Here we go. This is one of the little puppies that are just destroying our pilings right here. What kind of worm is this, Todd? What this is called is a gribble worm. And what it does is it comes into those pilings, eats the soft part of the rings of the wood, the, the saliva from it, breaks down and turns into an acid and breaks down the hard parts of the wood. So it's going to be able to get all the way into the center of the piling. Okay, this is a gribble worm and these are found in what, more southern? More southern tropical areas. Down here in Florida, the, the eastern seaboard we get when the war water gets warm. They go dormant in the winter. We're talking salt and brackish water here. Salt and brackish water, they love it. They just, all they do is eat away at these things. Okay, now hold on. This, this is very good quality marine grade lumber here. How are these things eating it? Well, the pressure treating that they do on these pilings, John, are just for application into the water. There's nothing inside the piling that's going to stop this guy from getting in there. He's going to eat no matter what. He's going to eat no matter what. 24 hours a day, he's eating. 
And this happens all over the world, anywhere in salt water, anywhere in brackish water. That's right. There's about 18 different kinds, like you stated before, that it just depends where you are on the globe, which one's going to be, but they all do the exact same thing. I have an important question for you. How can one dock, like mine, right here, have the worm problem, but yet you go maybe 100, 200 yards up the waterway, and the guy right next door, he doesn't have a problem at all with these things. It's a simple explanation, John. What they do is they're not good swimmers at all. So they'll stay in one piling until that piling is hourglass down to nothing, and they also breed every 90 days. So once they're in there, they're going to town. Okay. Um, we can let this guy loose, and he will swim right to that piling. He'll flip upside down, and he'll swim. You ready? Okay, are we in on that? Go ahead. Okay. And he's going to turn upside down. There he goes. He's upside down. And now he's looking for something to attach himself onto. He'll attach himself to a piling or a floating piece of wood, and that's how you get him down to the other docks. Like a magnet. Look at him. Look right at that there. thing right to the piling. Now what he'll try to do, John, is find a crack where he can get started. And once he gets a little spot, that's it. It's going to look like this in a matter of time, no matter what. So they're going to hang around the same dock until the food supply is all consumed. Then he's going to swim and he's going to find something else. That's right, John. Okay, so these pilings right here, close right. to shore, they're not that badly damaged yet. No. How do we get rid of these things? What we need to do is take away the two things that wood borers need to survive. Sunlight and circulating water for oxygen. And how we'll do that is we'll come in, the piling's already cleaned, we'll shrink wrap the piling from the sand line right on up above the high tide line. That will stop all the circulating water, cutting off all the oxygen to the piling. Then what we need to do is cut out the sunlight. That what we do there is we wrap on top of the shrink wrap with a high grade polyethylene from about six inches below the sand line right up to the bottom stringer of your dock right here so you're well above the high tide line. No sunlight, no circulating water, you're not going to have any problems, John. Let's go to work. Yep. What we need to do prior to any wrapping is just slightly move a little of the sand away from the base of each timber. This way we can get our wrap down that six inches beneath the riverbed like Todd mentioned earlier. We're going down first. Yeah, we'll take it all the way down. Okay. Next to the bottom. Now we're bringing it back up, right? Yep. So we're going around this thing many times. Many times. And this is what's cutting off the air. It's cutting off the air. That's found in the water. Right. Well, you can see how that there's no... There's no way for the water to it, penetrate. It forces the water out of the top and the bottom. Now that our piling is completely encased in the plastic shrink wrap, we'll take a half sheet of the thicker gauge black polypropylene and envelop the wood in order to slide it down into the river bottom, about a foot or so. Next, we'll nail it into place using some four penny stainless steel brads. Space and nails about three to four inches apart. And what we'll do is we'll nail this first piece all the way down. How do we touch this aside? We just measure it now. What we'll do is we'll take it like so. Put it along in. Make sure to get the height. It's on the ground. Get the height. Okay. And what we have to do is size up our next sheet of plastic so that it'll cover the piling from the underside of the deck joist down to about where the sand line is. With a utility knife, we'll cut it to length, and again, encircle that piling. We want a really cosmetic look to be on the back side where we're packing it. Right there. Good? A little more. Um, and we're not real even. Okay, wait, we're lining up the seam so that it's pretty inconspicuous. And again, we'll nail it into place, using one stainless steel nail about every three inches or so.
Well, these two pilings are looking very nice. We have them sleeved. These are the ones closest to the shore. And Todd, I hope you don't mind working out in the rain here. No problem. But we are trying to get the job done today. Now, the pilings that are a little bit deeper in the water, we have more excessive damage. The worms have really started to eat the wood, but we've come to the high tide mark or, or point of the day where we really can't see the damage. But what we have done is we've brought in a very similar looking piling so that you guys can get a visual of exactly what we're talking about. Remember I was talking about this hourglassing. Well, the worms have eaten so much of this, we actually have like an hourglass type shape on the piling and we can't just wrap this with the plastic and call it good to go, no, can we? Absolutely not. How do we make the piling structurally sound once again? What we need to do to the, uh, these pilings, John, is obviously they have more damage. We need to come in and we need to do a concrete system on this. And what we'll do is we'll come in, we'll use stainless steel nails, build a block around for a spacer, same around the bottom. Then we take the sleeve of plastic, put it over the piling, attach that with plastic straps and nail the seam. It's just like on the wraps. Now, how much of a gap is going all the way around the piling? We're trying to get at least two inches. The minimum is two inches is okay. what we do. Then what we do is once we have the cylinder built and it's in the sand line, we'll pour dry concrete into the cylinder. The dry concrete will go in, absorb the water that it needs in the cylinder and force out whatever else it's not going to use. Okay. Uh, it's a great way to fix the piling. The piling needs to be fixed. <laughs> Would this work on like a lift or, or a... We wouldn't uh, want to do it on a lift or on a mooring piling if it was in this kind of condition. We use the rule of thumb of 30% or more damage. That's when we go to the concrete system. All right, now let me ask you another question, Todd. What would the, uh, what would the cost of a full piling be to replace it? You want to rip it out, have a marine contractor actually uh, jet it in or whatever he's going to do to right. put it back in. What are we looking at price-wise? You're looking at average in between three and eight hundred dollars, depending if you have any electric or any plumbing on the piling at all. Um, oh, well, well, let's talk about this. How much would like just a sleeving be? Just a wrap would be about sixty-nine dollars a piling. That would include pressure cleaning, shrink wrapping, or wrapping the piling. Okay, and if you have to use the concrete? If you have to use the concrete, you're looking at about hundred and fifty a piling. And that's a lot cheaper than three to eight hundred dollars for new piling. Now, how did you guys come up with the idea? We actually didn't come up with the idea. Um, we stumbled onto some U.S. Navy reports that they've been doing the same thing for over 40 years. Um, it's a simple procedure. No sunlight, no circulating water, it's cured. So you formulated a company specifically uh, uh, aimed at helping boat owners and homeowners right. save a bunch of money. Yes. Todd, thank you so much. We appreciate all the help.